my name is Caitlin Sinclair Chappelle with CBR, and we're at San Diego Comic Con, and I am lucky to be joined by Cami Garcia, who's the writer on Constantine Distorted Illusions. How are you doing today? Good. How are you? I'm doing absolutely fantastic. I'm so excited to talk to you about Constantine as well as some of your other work with DC. But starting with Constantine, I would love to know what was the inspiration for Distorted Illusions? Well, they wanted me to do kind of a, you know, a YA, a teen-friendly Constantine, mm-hmm. which is challenging because, you know, he does a lot of adult-style bad behavior. Mm-hmm. So, um, I, you know, I really leaned into the, his, you know, the punk rock, the music, and obviously the occult mm-hmm. because, um, you know, I've been writing for teens and pros and comics for a long time, and, you know, occult is definitely not off-limits, so mm-hmm. he makes a lot of bad magical decisions in this book that mm-hmm. uh, involve demons, which is also really fun and mm-hmm. very fun to see Isaac Goodhart, the artist, mm-hmm. um, draw. Mm-hmm. And I would love to talk about Isaac's art for a bit. What were you most excited to see Isaac bring to life from your script in regard to Constantine? The magic. Mm-hmm. Um, the demon. Their Lady Marguerite is a prestigious magician that mm-hmm. Constantine's mother and stepfather want him to go to the United States and mm-hmm. study with. And she's this, like tall, regal, gorgeous, you know, formidable black woman who's a magician Mm -hmm. and she has this, thanks to Isaac, incredible wardrobe. Mm -hmm. And she lives in this brownstone that, you know, looks like a normal small kind of house. But when you walk in, it's enormous. Mm -hmm. It has these parquet floors and this ornately carved ceiling. And he drew like every detail of, I mean, he designed it obviously, Mm -hmm. but he drew every detail. um, And every time you go into her house, the layout style totally changes. It's a, it's very open mm-hmm. and expansive. Um, like, th- there's so many uh, favorite pages, but I'm trying to, like, think of different ones. So there's one page where Constantine touches a magical object. Mm-hmm. That she, the first thing she says when she has to leave the room is, do not touch anything, mm-hmm. you know? And, of course, the first thing he does when she leaves is touch something. Mm-hmm. And it triggers all these kind of flashbacks. And it's a page where you see Constantine, you see his head, and then there's this montage that of like waves above him, and each kind of wave is an inset of a memory. Mm-hmm. And Ruth Redmond did the color. The color's amazing. Um, so it's that kind of thing. Like Isaac really brought these very creative, out of the box layouts to the book, which I think gives it a really fresh feel because it is about like it's it, the layouts feel magical. Mm-hmm. Like Constantine is magical, mm-hmm. and then he's in a punk band, Mucus Membrane, mm-hmm. with his best friend Veronica. Mm-hmm. And every time they play a different punk club, the interiors are so cool. They're all modeled after real the interiors of real punk clubs in the eighties. And um, but but Isaac made each one look really distinct and different. And he's always doing something fun, you know, like he's in the mosh pit in one. You know, he's uh, he may or may not start a small fire accidentally in one. Constantine has a lot of, uh, you know, magical uh the kind of faux pas going on in this book. Mm-hmm. And speaking about the magic, you've worked with magic before, whether that's Raven or Beautiful Creatures. I would love to know, how does Constantine's magic differ from any of the other magic systems you've dealt with? I think one of the things that's interesting about Constantine is um, he also has kind of this, um, the two-level magic. He has the real occult magic, but he also has that kind of like sleight of hand con man style that goes with like more street magicians. So I tried to showcase that a little too and also uh, in the script provide like his kind of opinion on the difference between, you know, people performing magic and actual magicians in magic. Um, There's also a lot of magicians in the kind of magical society that his stepfather's in that are all from like different backgrounds, different countries, different types of magical, um, you know, abilities which was really fun. Uh, But, you know, I always like dark magic demons. Like, that's always kind of very on brand for me. Mm -hmm. And that was very fun. And Isaac did a great job. I love kind of, I love magic that has kind of a dark horror aesthetic without becoming gruesome. And this book is gorgeous. But the demon is scary. Like, he looks scary. So I feel like Isaac did this great job of keeping, like, the color palette that Ruth has done in the book is gorgeous. But he ma- managed to make like these creepy, scary moments without making the book kind of so terrifying that, you know, a 15 year old wouldn't want to read it. And I would love to touch on as well the punk rock aspect of this. Why incorporate punk rock into a Constantine story? What makes that work so well? Well, for you? as part of his canon. Mm-hmm. And um, he is very punk rock to me. He's edgy and sexy, he's a rule breaker. 
Um, he's nonconformist. Everything about him. My my oldest brother is a huge punk fan, and um, so I've been to several punk shows and uh, you know and kind of straight edge shows. And he he has that kind of spirit of a very nonconformist. And one of my favorite things in the book is Veronica needs a car to you know haul them around to shows in the D.C. Maryland area. And um, they buy a, uh, use like an old hearse. But they feel like it's not quite like punk rock enough. So they like buy spray paint and then they trick it out themselves. And like Isaac just, he, I mean, he's not even like, he's like, I don't listen to punk, but he like did all the research. So he has all of the symbology and the kind of iconography is correct. And that's really fun. And now I kind of want that hearse for myself. <laughs> I would love to look at your larger DC canon and work. You work a lot outside of the main DC canon, whether that's with Black Label or DC Young Adult titles. I would love to know for you, what do you like exploring the most since you work outside of the main canon so often with DC? You know, I really like being able to explore different sides of characters. Um, in Teen Titans, I one of the main things was I wanted the Titans to be very relatable and I wanted them to seem like I love the idea of magic being and powers being hidden in plain sight. So I wanted it to have more of the Superman feel where like you don't look at them and know they have powers. So for example, in our it, with my work with Piccolo in our world, you know, Beast Boy isn't green all the time, but he turns green when he turns into an animal. So playing with those things in my black label DC Har uh, DC Black Label Joker Harley Criminal Sanity, that's with Miko Schwan and um, Jason Badauer and Nicole Kwok. In that book, um, you know, Joker is the terrifying, unpredictable kind of serial murderer that we know. But instead of being his girlfriend, Harley, I leaned really heavily into doing kind of a procedural, like a mind, you know, mind hunter, criminal minds, true detective kind of procedural. And she's a clinical psychiatrist who is moonlighting as a profiler with Gordon to help try to catch him. So I always say it's not a love story but it still has a great Joker Harley dynamic. And those kinds of um, juxtapositions or like slight changes in characters for me are really fun to play with. And you know, obviously you can't do that in the continuity in the DCU because you, know, you have to stay in canon. Mm -hmm. So for me, I like to be able to kind of keep the core of the character but play around a little bit with you know, where they are, who they're with, what you know, a little bit about you know their their jobs or their roles in the in society without you know like I say without breaking them. Mm -hmm. And I would love to focus a little bit on Teen Titans because this is an ongoing young adult series. We've built up Raven, we've built up Beast Boy, we've seen their romance together, and now we're moving on to Robins. I would love to know for your upcoming Teen Titans Robins. Can you give us a little teaser into what's in store for us? Yeah. So <clears throat> the backstory was in my original pitch before. You know, I met Gabriel or had, you know, wanted him to do the art was um, Damian Wayne was the Robin. And then when Gabriel and I became super close, he was, and he knew there was a, you know, a series pitch, not just one book. He was very disappointed that Robin was Damian and not Dick because he loves Dick Grayson. So I really wanted, like, one of the challenges of having somebody who's drawing a series for years and years is you want to make it fun for them and you don't want them to be bored. So I was like, maybe I can find a way to, re, you know, kind of reconfigure the, the plot and the script so he, we could have Dick also. So it is very much a brother's story. It is, um, a, you know, Dick wants to be brothers. Damien does not want a brother, does, you know, wants no part of it. So you really get to see the differences. He's also a little younger, so he's the younger brother. And, um, and it's, it's fun because the Titans are kind of have become his found family. And in, we have the juxtaposition of, you know, Bruce has adopted Dick, and then Damien is his real son he didn't know about. But at the same time, um, you know, they're supposed to be family, and Damien doesn't want to be family with either of them. He doesn't like either of them, but... In true Dick style, he's like not to be deterred and he is determined to protect his little brother and hopefully, you know, have a relationship with him. And wrapping up, we saw in Beast Boy Loves Raven, we got to meet Damien. So with this new book, we get to meet Dick. What was your favorite thing about finally including Dick into this story, especially alongside Damien? They're just so different in a fun way. Mm -hmm. Damien has this very, he's got, a, he's, he does parkour, he carries his batarang that he swiped from his dad's, you know, from the Batcave. 
and he wears this kind of tactical Robin kind of gear, whereas Dick is very much in Gabriel's casual Teen Titan style, where he's got his letter Robin, you know, his Letterman jacket with the big R on it, and you know, sneakers. He drives a convertible. You know, he's more, and he's in college in this, so he's kind of more all American. Whereas, um, you know, Damien is has this kind of like you know shady past with you know living with his mom and his grandfather, and he has all these like cool skills. So. It's interesting because in the book, you'll actually see the kinds of things, the common ground they find, which is fun. But in the beginning, you kind of see what's different about them. And then as the story goes on, what we hope is that you start to realize, you know, as Damien does, that they also have a lot of share a lot of similarities. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today about both of these books. I'm so excited to pick them up. And once again, I'm Caitlin Sinclair Chappelle with CBR. CBR.